podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everyone. We will be getting started in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining. Well, good evening, everyone. I don't want to uh, delay us from starting at six o'clock. And uh, welcome to the Blaze Sports Youth Lead uh, webinar series. Uh, we're kicking off our series with So You're in College, Now What? A really timely topic. Uh, before I introduce our amazing panelists, I wanted to um, say a big thank you to the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency for supporting Blaze Sports and our Youth Lead uh, initiative. A couple of housekeeping things um, before I introduce our panelists. The first is that we will be recording this webinar um, and a, a copy will be available on our website. And if you need to hop off, you'll be able to access all the wonderful information that will be shared this evening. And it will also be shared through um, email at the end of the webinar. Um, there is a short survey at the end, and we ask that you please complete that to give us some feedback so we can improve for uh, future webinars. And then lastly, there will be a Q&A session um, at the end. And so if you have any questions throughout the uh, webinar, uh, you can type them into the question um, panel on your webinar control bar. We will do our best to try and get to all of them, but if some go unanswered, we will compile all our responses and make that available to all the registrants tonight. And so without further ado, I would like to introduce our panelists for this evening, uh, Samuel Armas and Amanda Espaldon. Um, both Amanda and Samuel are um, Play Sports Youth Lead interns uh, this summer. And so preparing this webinar um, and presenting this evening is part of their internship 
project. So here's a little bit about Sam. Samuel is a student at Auburn University. He's studying public administration and is graduating in 2022. He also plays wheelchair basketball as part of their collegiate program at Auburn as well. Um, wheelchair basketball is um, very near and dear to Sam's heart. He started playing wheelchair basketball with Blaze Sports and grew up playing with us for many years. So it's a thrill to have him as a panelist um, with us this evening. Um, Sam's uh, dream is to you know, start his own nonprofit and especially start a wheelchair basketball program where there is a greatest need, which is um, very much needed. And Amanda is a second year master's student in the Clinical Rehabilitation Counseling Program at Georgia State University. She obtained her bachelor's degree in psychology with a minor in Spanish from Xavier University. Uh, growing up, Amanda did play wheelchair tennis um, and really understands the importance of sport and how it has impacted her. Uh, she's not sure where her degree is specifically going to take her, but she knows that she wants to help individuals with disabilities uh, live their lives and to, to their fullest potential. So without further ado, I will turn the webinar over to Amanda and Sam. So thank you, Mara, for that introduction and welcome everybody to today's webinar. Thank you for joining us today. And I just wanted to start by going over what we'll be talking about. As you can see on your screen, these are the topics that we'll be addressing today. And as Mara said, at the end of today's webinar, we will have time for a Q&A. So as Mara said, leave your questions as we're talking and we will get to them at the end. Next slide, please. So our first topic that we're gonna be discussing today is the transition to life in college. We are going to be talking about our own experiences with navigating independence as first year college students, making friends, transportation, staying healthy both physically and mentally, and also talking about safety on college campuses because that's also important. Next slide. So independence is a really important part of many college students' lives. So for many of us, it's our first time living away from our parents in a dorm and our first time asserting our own independence from our parents and our families. So we wanted to share a little bit of what that experience was like for both myself and Sam. In my case, I only lived on campus for the first year of college and things were a little bit different for me because my school was only 20 minutes from home. So I still had the geographical closeness of my family when I needed it, when it was, which was really nice, but I wanted to live on campus for at least the first year in order to have what I considered to be the full college experience. At first, it was kind of hard to get into the rhythm of having my 8 a.m. philosophy class by myself without anything but my alarm waking me up and making lots of decisions on my own for the first time, but it was really nice to have the freedom to do other things when I wasn't scheduled to be anywhere else. And I learned that independence doesn't really mean that I have to do absolutely everything on my own, but with, with no one's help. So this is something that you'll hear both of us make, say through this, and it's really important to ask for help when you need it. I think people often think that being independent means that you have to go it alone, but you should still rely on those around you for support. And it was really crucial, crucial for me to have a support network throughout college. The next thing we're going to talk about is making friends in college. And this is a really important part of the college experience. While I had a smaller circle of friends, it really enriched my experience. And one of the places that I found my circle of friends was in choir. For me, making friends was about finding people who were in the same classes, the same activities and clubs, or even in the same dorm room as me and not really being afraid to reach out to those people. So the next topic we'll talk about is transportation and driving. So while I was in college and actually still right now, I am not able to drive, which is, a, is at times really inconvenient. As I said earlier, I was lucky enough to live close to home and often relied on my family for transportation. 
If you find yourself in a similar position, you might want to check with your school as some campuses I know have shuttle services that will take students to off campus locations like the mall or grocery store. So we also wanted to talk a little bit about your health in college. So in terms of physical health, we all know that eating healthy, staying hydrated, getting enough sleep, and taking care of your, your medical needs are important to your success and your happiness as a, as a student. It can often be really difficult to balance all these things when you're a first year college student. And to get more physical activity, we suggest that you find something that you enjoy doing, whether it's exercise classes or a sport or going to the gym because or some colleges have even their fitness center open to students. We also recognize that as people with physical disabilities, it can also be really difficult to get into physical activity in the first place. So if you can't find an access, accessible exercise class or gym or campus nearby, or can't or don't want to join your school's team, you can find some guided workouts or stretches online for free that you can probably just do from the comfort of your own room. So everybody, will, every little bit helps. And just like it's important to maintain your physical health in college, make sure that your mental health is in check too. Even if you don't find yourself particularly struggling, but especially if you do, talking to a counselor at the college counseling center or finding good coping strategies and just leaning on the people that you trust, like your friends, parents, family, and faculty advisors, will be really helpful in making sure that your, your mental health is in really good shape. So safety is yet another concern that people might have as they enter college. With safety, it's really important to know the protocol for emergency situations like natural disasters, fire emergencies, and the like. It's also important to know who to contact in case of an emergency or a problem. When I was in college, I remember at orientation, they had us put in the number of our campus police department with a one before the name in our contacts. So it would put it at the top of our contacts list to make it easier for, for us to contact them. Yeah, so similar to Amanda, um, for me at Auburn, Auburn is a really good distance to where it's not too close to home, but it's also far enough away for me to be on my own and be independent there. Um, it's only about an hour and 45 minutes. So it's kind of that perfect threshold of not too close yet not too far. Um, similar to Amanda, I lived on campus for my first two years of college and really enjoyed it. Um, I as well wanted to get the full experience of what it was like to live on campus and kind of have that dorm room experience at college. And um, the main things that I want to touch on here is the staying healthy in college with the um, both physically and mentally part. Um, so we all so your physical health is of the utmost importance, especially now that you're going to be on your own. Um, coming into college with a disability, um, we all have different medical needs. We all have different medical uh, practices and routines. And um, one of the most stressful situations that you can be in at college is going through one of your medical routines and then not knowing what to do next or if there's some type of problem or situation, um, having to fix it all on your own and not having your parents there to rely on like you do at home. So one thing that I really wanna to touch on here is that before you go to college, um, practice your medical routines or practices or whatever it may be learn to become independent with those medical needs because like i said at college if there is any type of situation um your parents aren't there um your siblings aren't there um you'll be on your own trying to fix these situations so it's best to come prepared and just be ready to first of all practice these routines so you become really good at them and you can do them on your own. And then secondly, be prepared for if there are any situations, um, what to do, making sure you have the right supplies there and um, just avoiding any stress or any type of situation that could put your medical health in danger. And then secondly, on the mental side of that, um, in my personal experience at Auburn, classes uh, are very, very stressful, um, you know, keeping your gpa up there and doing good during your first year of college is a very difficult challenge um and then on top of like losing sleep for studying for a test 
through the night or um, anything similar like that, your mental health is definitely going to be challenged during your first year in college. And what I have found through my own personal experience is that the best way to keep your mental health up is to find people who you mesh with and go through college together. Um, you know, during your freshman year, a lot of other people are trying to adapt to independence as well alongside with you. So it's very important to rely on them and kind of make friends so you can, you know, vent if you need a vent or just ask for advice or go through um, studying together or anything like that. It's always good to go through college with somebody by your side or more preferably a whole group of people um, as close friends who you can work together with and just push through any challenges that you can find together. And by doing that, it's really gonna keep your mental health at a place that it needs to be to help you get through with the challenges that come with the freshman year of college. Next up. So now we're gonna talk about sports and adaptive athletics in college. In my case, I've been playing wheelchair tennis since I was in second grade recreationally and have really enjoyed not only the game itself, but the connections and the memories that I've been able to make and the lessons that I've learned playing the game. So Sam is currently playing wheelchair basketball for Auburn, and he'll talk a little bit about what it's like to be a college athlete and what that world is like. Next slide. Yeah, so just to give you a little background on me, um, I grew up um, playing able-bodied baseball. Uh, baseball was my passion. I was a pitcher for a long time. And uh, I played that for as long as I could, but then I got to a point where I realized that my physical disability would keep me from playing it in the long term. Um, I have spina bifida, which um, affects the mobility in your legs. So um, when I would play baseball, after I hit the ball, I was really slow running to first base and I would get thrown out a lot. And just several other challenges like that made me realize that baseball wasn't in my long term future. So I really wanted to find another sport that would be accessible to me as a sport that I could see myself playing for a long time. So growing up, I tried just about any um, adaptive sport that you could think of. Um, I tried wheelchair track, wheelchair softball, um, adaptive swimming was my thing for a long time. Um, I did wheelchair tennis, anything that you could think of, I wanted to get my hands on and try it. And then eventually I was introduced to wheelchair basketball by a friend in the sixth grade. And ever since then, um, I've stuck to it and I joined Blaze and I had an incredible experience playing through Blaze um, from sixth grade all the way through graduation of high school. And I was able to earn a scholarship to play wheelchair basketball at Auburn University. So that's a little bit about me and my background with adaptive sports. And um, so now to go over some of these points with you. Um, playing sports as a child growing up through middle school and high school has really impacted me um, just overall in my life growing up, it really gave me the confidence that um, I lacked before adaptive sports. It gave me kind of like a sense of um, belonging or a sense of purpose um, and knowing that when I'm playing my sport, um, I can just be myself and I don't really have to worry about any other care in the world. So I kind of use it as my escape route like that. And um, it just gave me such a boost of confidence that really helped my childhood growing up. And then there are different levels of challenges and rewards for being a collegiate athlete with a disability. Um, as far as challenges go, um, when you're on a team with other disabled athletes, there's a good chance that your teammates are not going to be the same level of disabled or mobility as you. Um, so there's gonna be people here who can use their legs a lot better than others or who have more core function and different things like that. So sometimes it's challenging to work with people who were who may have more mobility than you or less mobility with you. Um, but one way to offset that is that the coaching staff at whatever team you're on, um, chances are they've worked with these different levels of uh, mobilities before and these different disabilities. So they'll be experienced with this and they can make up catered workouts that can fit best to you and your level of mobility and they know how to mesh together a team of different people with different um, mobilities. Um, and then rewards for being a collegiate athlete. Um, the number one, one reward that it has for you is that it keeps you in a very, very good physical shape. Um, for I know that pushing around uh, campus, myself in a wheelchair, 
Um, sometimes those hills can be really, uh, can be a killer for sure. So um, playing a sport has really kept me in shape and is able to um, keep me pushing the class every day strong, um, which I would also recommend going to your university uh, rec center. Um, even if you're not a, uh, you know, a student athlete in a program at a university, going to the rec center to being able to stay in shape also goes a long way to uh, keeping up your physical uh, fitness and helping you push the class if you do that. And then also another reward is that um, my teammates and I have become a very strong brotherhood. Um, it's unlike anything that I felt before. And going back to what I said in the previous slide, talking about how being with other people helps you get through college a little bit smoother. Um, my and my rock, um, I've helped them whenever they've needed um, assistance. They've gave, given me advice whenever I had questions to ask. And they really have helped me make it through my first two years of college um, with as minimal, um, you know, road bumps as possible. So it really, uh, wheelchair basketball at college introduced me to those guys and they made them my brothers, which I'm very thankful for. Um, so the world of college adaptive athletics, I'm just gonna give you kind of a, a typical day in my life um, at Auburn. So, Practice starts at 5.30 in the morning a.m. So we have to be on the court at 5.15. So I wake up at 4 a.m. every day, um, eat, a break, eat a slight breakfast, go to practice, practice from about 5.30 to about 7.30, 8 o'clock, right around there. And then after that, I'll push back to my room, shower, and uh, go to class. I go to class anywhere from about um, 10 to 2, 10 to 3, right around there. After that, I'll go back to the gym and um, get in a lifting workout or a shooting workout or whatever the coach has for me there. And then um, after that, I'll go get some food and uh, go back to my room to do homework or do some studying or something along those lines. And if I have time after all of that, before I go to bed, I'll hang out with some friends or my teammates. And then I'll usually end up going to bed around nine or 10. Um, and then advice for anybody who is coming in um, wanting to be an athlete at a college with a disability. Um, my main piece of advice would be just to, you know, don't be intimidated by the experience of being in a collegiate athlete with a disability. Um, I understand um, when I was coming into my freshman year, I was very intimidated. Um, I didn't really know what it would be like. I knew there was a lot of other people out there who were better than me. And um, I was kind of worried being the uh, freshman in the collegiate division. But honestly, being a part of an adaptive sport is the best decision that I've ever made. Um, and I've truly enjoyed it. I'm so glad that I took this opportunity and I worked through some of that intimidation and I began to become more comfortable as I got more adjusted to it. And I think anyone else who is um, coming up as a freshman on a collegiate adaptive sport team, I think they would experience the same thing. I think that it's intimidating at first, but over time you're gonna realize how fun it is and you're gonna get adjusted to it. And then over time, it's not gonna become intimidating at all. So that would be my piece of advice, just to not be intimidated by the new opportunity and just to look on it optimistically and just to have fun. Next slide. So this is a list of some of the um, adaptive sport colleges that are offered across the country. So for wheelchair basketball, there are 10 different um, colleges that offer programs. And these are a few of the uh, programs. Uh, this is all of them, but these are a few that are um, a part of those 10. And then for wheelchair track, there are four schools that offer track programs. And these are those four schools. And then towards the end of the PowerPoint, um, we have a resource list that has the uh, full list of the, the uh, different college programs that offer wheelchair basketball and track. Next slide. All right, so now we're gonna be talking a little bit about accommodations in college. Next slide. So we'll be talking about what a reasonable accommodation is, what types of accommodations might be available to you as a student, how you might get one at your school, and we'll also touch a bit on vocational rehabilitation a little bit later. Next slide. So 
So first, what exactly is a reasonable accommodation? A reasonable accommodation is basically a slight adjustment to a job or education program that allows someone with a disability to be able to fully participate in that program. When you're in college, it's on you as the student to get the process of setting up your accommodations. At my school, in order to set up accommodations, we have to register with the Office of Disability Services and meet with them to talk about the accommodations that we'll need. So once you meet with the Disability Services Office, you have to contact each of your professors and meet with each of them individually, and it's usually at the first week of the, of the semester to talk to them about what accommodations you'll need that the Disability Services has approved you for. And we also typically have a form that kind of outlines the accommodations that the professors have to kind of sign off on. And in my experience, each of my professors has always been really accepting and open in this process. Um, so one piece of advice that I would um, want to touch on for this is don't be um, intimidated or scared to talk to your professor about accommodations that you may need. Um, you know, these professors have had years of ex experience more than likely, and chances are that they've encountered this accommodation before you, and they will probably encounter this accommodation again after you. Um, so the teachers and professors are there to ultimately benefit you and set you up for success. Um, so all of your teachers will be understanding um, when you go up and talk to them about your accommodation. So be sure just to be comfortable around them when talking to them about it. Um, you know, like I said, they've probably seen this before. So you can uh, take a vote of confidence with that. And just don't be intimidated when talking to them um, because they're there for your benefit. So they're there to help you. Next slide. So what are some educational accommodations that you as the student may be able to benefit from? So some accommodations include accommodations for testing. So this includes things like extra time on exams, being able to take the tests in a no distraction environment. Um, and then you have texts in alternative format. So this could be like an audiobook rather than a physical textbook. Um, you also have supplemental notes and the ability to record lectures and have other support, supportive note-taking services. And you also have other accommodations available like course substitutions, or you could have full-time status with a reduced course load. So personally, I have benefited from accommodations like being able to record my lectures and the ability to take more frequent breaks during class since I have to self-catheterize. And the process takes me a little bit longer than the typical 10 minute break we usually get in the middle of class. And I also have a bit of a leniency on the tardiness policy due to my mobility constraints, since it takes a little bit longer for me to get to class, since I also use a manual wheelchair, as Sam was saying earlier. Yeah, so similar to Amanda, I also had a uh, tardiness, uh, more leeway with that. And some of my classes are kind of on the opposite side of campus, so pushing there would take a little bit longer. Um, so I had accommodation and accommodation that would let me be um, a little bit late there with no penalty. And then also I had accommodation that would allow me to um, be a little bit late or maybe miss a class if I needed to due to a, a medical situation going on. So if I ever had anything going on medically, or if I needed to stay in my dorm room to take care of it, I had an accommodation to where um, there would be no penalty for missing class and I would be able to receive a lecture at a later date. Next slide. So for those of you who have not been through the process of requesting accommodations, it may be a bit overwhelming to figure out what to ask when you meet with the Office of Disability Services. So we've compiled a list of questions that might be helpful to ask when you meet with your school's disability office. We have already touched on the first couple of questions that, and it's important to note that these processes might be slightly different at each school. So some other questions that you might want to ask are, what are the safety procedures? If you're living on campus, or even if you're not, you're going to probably spend, be spending a lot of time at your school, hopefully. 
So it's important to know what to do in case of an emergency and know the procedures for people with disabilities when there's a crisis. The other thing that may be helpful to ask is what other support services might be helpful during my time here? Chances are the Disability Services Office might be able to help you get connected to a number of offices and student organizations on campus that'll fit your, in, your interests and your needs. So at Auburn, um, the process to obtaining an accommodation was, we have a Office of Accessibility, and through the Office of Accessibility was how you would get your accommodation. So all you had to do was just to uh, talk over the phone or email the uh, Office of Accessibility to set up a face-to-face -face meeting with an um, advisor or an expert on the accommodation to set you up. And then you discuss with them kind of what your needs are and they're able to tell you what accommodations they have to offer and which ones they think would benefit you. And then through that, um, you're able to work with them to contact your professors and alert them of this accommodation and then it's set up for the remainder of the semester. Next slide. So now we're gonna talk about um, academic success. So you figured out your schedule, your accommodations, and you've got the first syllabus for your first college class. How do you make sure you make the grade? Next slide. So the first tip that we have for you is, of course, to manage your time. So this is something that I've admittedly struggled with for most of my students, as I'm sure a lot of you have. But I have found some techniques and some tools that have allowed me to better manage my time. So first, I diligently keep a planner and I write everything down so that I don't forget things. It sounds really basic and really simple, but it's so easy to forget sometimes when you are really overwhelmed with homework and tests and all of your busy schedule. I've also personally found that using something called the Pomodoro Technique, which is when you chunk your time into 25 minute chunks separated by five minute breaks has been really helpful in keeping me focused whenever I'm working on a big project or a big paper. So second, we encourage you to talk to your classmates. Whether you're in a class of 20 or 20 or 200, if you have a question or a problem, it's more than likely that at least one other person in that room has that same question. So lean on your classmates for support. Our third tip is to find your personal learning style. We've provided a link here to the VARC learning style questionnaire, which assesses your learning style, whether it's visual, oral, reading, writing, or kinesthetic. And knowing this, I've found, can be really helpful so you can tailor your studying strategies to be a little bit more effective and personal to your needs. Our next tip is to go to office hours with your professors. And this is when you can ask them questions about the material or share your concerns about the class. And this is also a great way for your professors to get to know you, especially if you're in a bigger class which will only be more beneficial for you in the long run as you begin to apply to jobs and seek professional opportunities and need some recommendations. You'll have those connections with the professors you actually talked to and got to know during college who can actually vouch for your hard work and your dedication. Tutoring and support services is also another helpful way to help, help you succeed academically. I know when I was in college, I really struggled in things like math and anatomy and sought a tutor for those subjects. And this is actually when I actually found out about the VARC that I mentioned earlier and found it really helpful as she catered her tutoring to my learning needs. But tutoring is really helpful when you're struggling and helps to have a different person other than the professor explain it to you sometimes. And finally, mobility concerns are also really related to academic success, especially when you have a physical disability, because if you can't make it to class, then how are you going to do well? So it's important to communicate with your professors whether or not you'll be late or absent and just be really upfront about it. Next slide. So now Sam is going to talk a little bit about some of the things that are happening on his campus and what you might expect, expect to see as a result of the current global pandemic. Next slide. Yeah, so um, 
as I'm sure all of you have experienced so far, um, the coronavirus has kind of thrown a wrench into what normal life was like in all aspects, but this especially holds true for school and for college. Um, so for me, um, we went home in right around March or February-ish, March-ish area. And um, we, um, at first we were told that um, we were gonna just, um, be there for the whole semester and it would all be okay. And then we were told that um, everything was gonna be online and then the dorms closed down. So then we went home after that. Um, but now going forward in the future, um, we've kind of started to learn a few things, at least for Auburn, um, about what life is gonna be like. So um, I think last week or the week before, Auburn announced that um, we are going to go from early August, the regular start time through Thanksgiving. And then after Thanksgiving, we are going to be home person, um, permanently until the spring semester. So usually how that works is we would go, um, we would have a couple of different breaks and then we would have Thanksgiving break. We would go home, we would come back for two or three weeks to take finals and then we'd go home for Christmas break. But this time um, we're just going to be home for good after Thanksgiving. And there's a couple of different things that um, colleges are going to look to do, um, at least for Auburn. Um, I know that there is a new policy that's going to be in place is that you're going to be required to bring seven different masks to school. And the purpose of that is to rotate your masks for every day of the week, um, just to kind of make sure that everything stays safe and your mask doesn't get too uh, dirty or contaminated over time. And then also um, uh, class sizes, such as the big like 100, 200 person lecture halls are either gonna be reduced or they're gonna go online. Um, that's something that hasn't really been announced yet. But um, regardless of whatever changes happen due to COVID-19, um, it's very important to remember that during this crazy and hectic time, um, we all are, you know, adjusting to life together. Um, you're not on your own on this. Um, everyone is going through this. Everyone is having to adapt and change their daily life to go to this new norm for the time being. Um, so take heart in that and remember to um, talk to your classmates, talk to your professors and get as much help as you need because everybody is gonna be adjusting to this. There's gonna be hiccups, there's gonna be problems that weren't there before that COVID is gonna introduce, but that's okay because there's a very, very, very good chance that you're not gonna be the only one who has these problems. So remember that we're all going through this together, um, take heart in that and be sure to use your peers, your friends, your teachers, um, the people around you, just be sure to use them um, for advice or if you need any assistance going through this. Uh, really weird time. Next slide. So some final thoughts as we end our time today. Next slide. So your mission, class of 2020. The first thing is to find and contact your college campus's Office of Disability Services. Once that's done, contact each of your professors to talk to them about what you might need for the classes that you are taking this semester. And then be sure to map out the accessible routes to your dorm room, your dining hall, your classes, and other campus hotspots. Um, just be sure to do that ahead of time so that way you don't have to worry about missing class because you don't know which route to take or where the building is or anything like that. And then be sure to eat, that you have the appropriate technology materials that you need for your classes. Next slide. So we've shared a lot about our experiences with you today, but overall, we just want you to remember a few things. First of all, it's important to ask for help, whether you're struggling, struggling a little or a lot. Second of all, college is a lot more fun when you, you spend your experience with other people. So find your people. And lastly, be prepared, but definitely learn to be flexible and learn to expect anything and go with the flow. Next slide. So we have compiled a few resources that might, you, you might find helpful in your journey as you navigate the first year of college.
Next slide. So here are just a few resources that we compiled. Um, the first link is the, a link to the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency. And this is a state agency dedicated to helping individuals with disabilities find employment. The second link is a link to um, 10 things I learned from being a student athlete. And this is one man's take on the lessons that he learned from being a student athlete. Number three is the link to the VARC Learning Styles Questionnaire that I mentioned a little bit earlier in our presentation to determine what kind of learner you are, which will be really helpful for all of you students. The next one is a link to an explanation of the Pomodoro Technique, which is the time management technique that I personally use um, a lot of the time with my studying. And the next link is a link to the most requested educational accommodation um, that are often requested by and given to students. And then the next one is information on accommodations in the workplace. And then the next one is the free, free application for federal student aid. And then the final link is the colleges with, with adaptive sport program. Next slide. Okay. Um, so Amanda and Sam, thanks. Lots of um, nuggets of information there, and it was really good to hear your uh, experiences. Um, so we do have um, we have some time, and we do have a couple of questions. Um, I'll just kind of summarize. So um, this is actually for question for both of you. Um, that now that you've both gone through first year of college. What's one thing you would do differently? Sam, we'll start with you. Oh, man. Um, I would say the one thing I would do differently is I would try to make more friends early on in college. Um, when I got there as a freshman, I was very kind of intimidated. It was like a new environment with new people. Um, I was very kind of hesitant to meet new people just because it was such a new and kind of big setting that I was in. Um, so in retrospect, um, I realized that a lot of different people were the same as me, just hesitant to uh, make friends. And that led to a lot of like, you know, lack of communication among my classmates and stuff like that. So I would be go back and be more open to making friends and initiate some of those conversations. And I think that um, that way um, friends would be made a lot easier and we could have helped each other um, throughout that first little uh, couple months of freshman year go a little bit more smoothly. Okay, great. How about you, Amanda? Anything that you would do differently? I would definitely echo Sam's sentiment. Um, I would definitely see if I could make more friends and just be a little bit more social and all of that stuff. Um, that's, I think that's why I personally kind of emphasize that throughout our talk today, um, because I find that that's really instrumental in kind of making the experience what it is. And that's something I wish I would have done more. Um, and then last, we had two questions, kind of the same thing was, who was your, uh, your greatest or your biggest, um, most important mentor? to help you in first year. Amanda, do you want to share any of your thoughts on that? Oh, wow. Um, Was it a teacher or parent or? I would say probably my parents really guided me a lot my first year. Um, yeah, I would say my parents really guided me, guided me, my mom especially. Okay. How about you, Sam? Was there some I would say mentored you? Yeah, I would say um, last year I had a teammate who was a senior named Blake. Um, he had been playing for a long time and he was a really mature guy. Um, I looked to him for advice for both on and off the court. Um, a lot of class advice, time management, studying advice, all that stuff. And then he really helped me become a better player and better man on the court as well. Um, so he was definitely one of the guys that I looked up to and I um, definitely took his advice and became better from that. Okay, great. 
Um, well, I think that um, kind of wraps up our, our webinar. I want to thank uh, Amanda and Sam for putting all this information together. I know that um, it'll be really useful for some of our Blaze Sports athletes that are going to be freshmen this um, this fall. Um, so thank you. Thank you both. And thank you all for being part of um, this webinar this evening. Just a couple of um, housekeeping things. Um, in On your webinar panel, you'll see a handout that um, you can download and will also be available when we um, share the recording of this webinar of all the wonderful resources that Sam and Amanda put together with links that so you can um, learn about that Pomodoro technique um, for time management that Amanda uses. I know I'm going to be checking that out myself. Um, but if you want to learn more about the Youth Lead program that Blaze Sports um, started, it you can go to our visit our website. Or if you had any specific questions, you can also email me. Um, Sam and Amanda have graciously provided their email address. If you want to really dig deep and ask them some questions about their college experience, um, their email addresses are are here on the screen. And then um, for uh, our upcoming Youth Lead webinar on June 30th, um, we'll be talking about um, you know, successful transition um, for youth with disabilities and um, really keeping youth with disabilities in mind to be successful as you transition from high school to college. So thank you all again. Thank you, Amanda and Sam. Um, and that will conclude our, our webinar.